Hey everyone, it's Anthony from Pretty Printed here. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to handle exceptions in the Python requests library. So this video is from my course called Learn Python Requests. So if you're interested in seeing the other videos in this course, just go to my website. I'll put a link in the description and you can check out the other videos if you join the course. So I hope you enjoy. Thanks for watching. Okay, so now let me demonstrate some exceptions that you can get. So first thing I'll do is I will comment this out. And I'm going to send a request to something on HTTP bin. So it's going to be a get request. And if I copy the base URL and put it here, it's going to be a get request. And what I'll be doing is I'll be sending to, where is it? I'll be sending to the status endpoint. So if I can find status somewhere in here, I must keep missing it. There it is. Okay, so status slash code. So what that means is status is the endpoint and then colon code is actually a variable and that's the status that I want. So to demonstrate this, status slash 205 and then I'll print the response. So if I go ahead and send this, I get a 205 response. So whatever number I put in here, I will get returned to me. So 505, response is 505. So that's not too important yet. But if I want to raise for an error status, so remember that anything that starts with a 400 or a 500 will be an error. Let's say 500. I can call this r.raise for status and this will throw an exception whenever I get an error status code so let's see so you see I have this error here it's telling me that it raised this exceptions.http error 500 server error internal server error if I change this to be 200 then it won't raise that exception. If I put it back to a number that's in the 400s, like 423, it will show me an exception again. And the reason why this is important is because normally when you're creating an API and you're sending a request to some endpoint, you are expecting it to succeed. So if it fails, either because you did something wrong or the server messed up, you want to know that and you can use exceptions to do to know when something has gone wrong so in this particular case i'll just copy the exception and i will put this inside of race for status and i'll just put air 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 okay so now let's try this And the syntax is wrong. So let's see. Request.exceptions.http error. Oh, I put this in the wrong spot. So it should go in the accept block. So I'll put it there. Okay, so we see, if I just run that again, we see error, error, error. That's the exception that I just caught. And then you still see the error code. If I change this to a success code, then I get 200. So I'll change it back to an error, let's say 501. And it says error, error, error again. So this allows me to handle that error without like crashing my app. Because once an exception is raised, then your app stops running. So you have to catch it and handle it if you want your app to continue running. Sometimes you want it to crash, but in this particular case, we're going to let the app continue running. And then it goes on to print the response 501. So that's one type of error. And another type of error is a connection error. So what I'll do is I will comment out this section and I'm going to send a request. If I can spell request right, 
to a URL that doesn't actually exist. I hope this doesn't exist. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to send a request to and let's see what happens. So it's trying to send and you see it's just waiting and waiting and waiting. And it waits and it waits and it waits and it waits. So it's trying to connect to this random URL that I typed in, but it can't. And then finally, after some time, it crashes with this long, long error trace back and error message. And basically that error message is a connection error. So it's an exception again. So if I put this inside of the try, so try, and then accept. So connection error, I just got that from the console. Then I'll print connection error. So it's a little more friendly of a message. So I'll try that again. But as you can see from the error, it tells you what's going on. It just says it could not establish a new connection. And that means that you know the URL is not correct or the server is down. It just could not connect at all. So I'm waiting and it's trying to connect, it's trying to connect and after some time it's going to give up and say, hey, connection error. And that's exactly what we see here. So those are the two really common exceptions that you'll deal with. In the next video, I'll show you how to handle timeouts. That's something that you can kind of trigger on your own. But just keep that in mind when you're writing your requests that they can fail. So you have to account for that situation because servers aren't always up. Uh, they don't always return a successful message. So that is very important to keep in mind when you are writing apps that have requests in them.